Tonight we're in Carmel, Indiana at Kazuki Ramen and Izikaya and I'm taking on the Ramen Challenge. Let's go for it. From WMNTS in Central Indiana, you're watching Eating Cereal. All right, tonight I'm in Carmel, Indiana, at Kazuki Ramen and Izikaya, taking on their ramen challenge. And uh, it's a big bowl of ramen, and I've got 30 minutes. Let's do it. All right, on mark, get set, go. So in this episode, I'm eating a large bowl of ramen in Indiana. So I want to discuss a little bit about what ramen is and just what is happening at the microscopic and even the molecular level when it's cooked. So if you'll remember from the episode about gluten and celiac disease, the main components of pasta noodles are long chain starch molecules, which are bound together by gluten. The gluten provides structure and texture to the pasta. Now there is debate as to whether or not ramen is considered a pasta, but it is composed of the same base material as spaghetti, which is wheat flour. Now, the difference between ramen and spaghetti is in the properties of the wheat flours that make them up. They're made from two different crops. Spaghetti is made from durum wheat flour, while ramen is made from soft wheat flour. Several hundreds of years ago, soft wheat flour was very common in Asia, although ramen noodles didn't come about until the early 1900s. Durum wheat was common in Italy, giving rise to the invention of pasta. This is why pasta is thought of as originating in Italy, although it has been speculated that it may have started in Greece. Soft wheat flour based noodles are often thought of as Asian foods. In the modern world, these crops are grown all over the world, so there are no geographic restrictions on where you can get ramen or spaghetti. At the molecular level, the main difference between these two types of crops and the noodles they produce is the gluten content. While both of them are mostly starch, the ramen noodles have a much smaller amount of gluten binding the starch molecules together. This makes them less structurally stable. This can be tested fairly easily if you'll just take a spaghetti noodle and a ramen noodle of similar thickness and try to break them. Neither of them should be very difficult to break, but you'll notice that to break the spaghetti noodle, you do have to apply a certain amount of force, whereas the ramen noodle just sort of crumbles, almost crumbles right in your hands. In addition to being made from a different type of flour, ramen noodles also contain a mineral water called kansui. This type of water originates most commonly in Mongolia, and it gives the ramen its yellowish color and its dry texture. In the modern world, kansui may not be available everywhere, and eggs are often used to achieve a similar effect. One last thing to look at is what happens when spaghetti and ramen are cooked. The process of cooking both of these pastas involves the absorption of water by the noodles. You may ask, why do I have to boil water to cook my pasta? The answer is technically you don't, that's just the fastest way to cook it because boiling water is the hottest water possible. The boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit at sea level. Water is always evaporating at a certain pressure, usually at a very low pressure, but when you bring the water up to its boiling point, the pressure of the vapor is equal to that of the atmosphere, 14.7 psi, and the water escapes the liquid phase as steam, and the steam just flows away. The water bowl remains in its place at 100 degrees Celsius no matter how much heat you apply. The amount of it that is there just decreases over time because steam is being liberated from the bowl of water. So when the instructions on the pasta box say boil water and cook for 10 minutes, what they're really saying is cook it in a water-rich environment at 100 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. Sometimes they say to cook longer at high altitudes. This is because high altitudes have lower air pressure, so the water has to reach a lower temperature to achieve its boiling point. So if the temperature is only 95 degrees Celsius, you need to cook it longer. You can also raise the boiling point of water by adding impurities to it, such as salt. Every time you drink water, whether it's from a tap or from a bottled water place, it has a certain level of molality of salt, which is a measure of how many moles of salt are dissolved in the water per kilogram of solution. Pure water's salt molality is zero. The higher the molality, the higher the boiling point, and the lower the freezing point is. So when ramen 
and spaghetti are cooking at the molecular level, what is happening to the noodles is that they are accepting water in between these networks of starch chains and gluten molecules. The hotter the solution is, the more spread out these networks of starch and gluten are, and the faster the water will get intercalated into this network. If you leave pasta in cold water overnight, it will technically cook, but the noodles won't get very big because the networks did not spread out enough under high heat to let all that water get into them. So the purpose of cooking in boiling water is so that it will be done as fast as possible and so that the temperature of the cooking is standardized. So the producers of the noodles know what to tell you in terms of cooking time. Now here's why ramen cooks so much faster than spaghetti. Ramen has a lot of starch and not a lot of gluten binding it together. So the starch chain networks spread out like crazy when compared to the spaghetti. They're so quickly able to accept the water absorption so they get fully absorbed in two to three minutes rather than the 10 to 12 minutes it takes for spaghetti. So now let's finish off this ramen and head to Chicago. That's good ramen. That's good ramen. That's really good ramen. Good. And so much time to spare. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, <laughs> plenty of sand left in the hourglass. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.